Right guys, Mike Crossword here in my hands today. I'm hitting the King uh, from Cobra. So the Cobra King F6 Plus Pro driver. Interesting in its Pro versions because it's actually not very different to its standard versions. Let's show you what I mean. Let's get stuck in. Right, so I've got the King F6 Plus Pro. It's a 460 head like the standard version. It's got the track on the bottom made from carbon fiber rather than metal, I presume, which has made it lighter. So they've saved eight grams of weight, which from the track, which they're gonna put into the weight, which is now 18 grams, giving you five steps of different CG placement. So I've got it right at the back here, and we're gonna test it going right to the front to show you the difference in the numbers. So it's gonna give you quite an optimum ball flight changing model with this heavier weight in this track. Uh, when it moves forwards, it goes right out into the toe, which is a slightly strange and different way um, of moving the weight, but we'll talk about that. Now, the big difference with this club, it's not the looks, it looks exactly the same really from here, it's exactly the same as the standard model, but it goes down in lower lofts, so I think it starts from 7 going up to around 9s or 10s, where the standard version I think starts at 9 and goes up to 11s or 12s. So basically it's the same club, but you get lower lofted options. Um, now I'm going to hit this club with the weight in the back, uh, smart pad design on the back, on the bottom, which allows the club to sit relatively neutral, which I think it does. Comes in a few different, I'm not sure if the Pro comes in different colours actually, I'll have to check that. But I've got it in the black with the white lipstick line around the back, looks very nice. Um, Cobra line up line on top as well. Let's give it a hit. Weight at the back. So really I've got this set, oh a nice little carb to the right, I've got this set in a nine and a half degree loft which is where I tested the standard one. So to be honest with you, this club is exactly the same as the standard one, apart from people who want a lower lofted club. So that one went, I missed that one there, how far were we going there, that one went um, too far, 245, short ball guy here, he'll cut it, um, 28 spin, spin went way up all on my strike. Let's give that another go. It was a more toey, turny strike, so I should get a little, better spin model out of that one. So 265, back to my normal kind of spin model. Uh, and that one's spinning at 1.8, so relatively low. Max, that's a thousand revs difference in strike there. This track, along with everyone else's, well, everyone else's tracks and what have you, are normally changing it 300 revs. This track is changing it 500 revs. I've just changed it 1,000 in strike. Strike is king. Yeah, on the king. Let's give it one more go. Again, just push that a bit. Maybe a weaker one with that shape for me. Struck it okay. Just face the path control, maybe not as good on that one. Um, so 258, so you can see it's kind of averaging out where my driver normally adds out, spinning around 24 I think average, yes 24 uh, and averaging 256 uh, even with a 245 uh, kind of miss hit in there as well. So it performs well, again it's just those lofts that are different on the pro version to the standard version. So I'm going to move that weight forwards, put it right in the front out towards the toe, let's see what it does. Right, so I've moved the weight into track uh, penetrating, so they like penetrating and towering and mid in the bottom to give you some ideas of where the CG placement should go for what kind of flight you want. So I'm now going to be penetrating my flight ball at the fr uh, track at the front and it's moved out towards the toe, which will show you the results. I find it a little strange out there for me. So I feel like that was quite a centered hit. Not a bad, went a little bit left. Interesting to see the numbers on that. I felt like I hit that quite well. Yeah, so 269 uh, and car, that's spinning now 17. So definitely dropping down. Now that was a toey strike, but look, it's not coming back like it normally would because of that CG moving more out into the hill. So it wasn't that far toe of the CG. Um, rolling out to nearly 300, so 270, again, that's going to be spinning down at what, 1.9. So you can see what's happening here, the spin is coming off with that CG forwards, which is exactly what I would expect. I hit one slightly left, but not getting my normal turn, 
because it's moved out into the toe slightly. I do think this club could work. High spinners who hit maybe lots of left shots, that CG low and forward in the toe like that, I reckon could really help quite a few of them. Okay, hit that one okay, but look at that, um, that's not the turn I would feel I got from that shot. So it's not suiting me out in the toe, which I would, I know it wouldn't. But I think people who, so that's 266, so people who do struggle with going left a lot um, and with high spin, I reckon that could really help them. So I'm averaging 268 to 256 further with the CG forwards because the spin is averaging 1.9 opposed to the 2.4, around that 500 revs, which is exactly what Cobra say this track does. 500 revs for a fitter is quite a lot of revs to work with. Normally it's two, 300, 100 with a track movement. So the track here is really pushing uh, this club to its limits, which is quite clever. Pro version, post your comments down below. Apart from the lofts, it's the same. So if you want those lower lofts, I know some players who want seven degree drivers and what have you, the pro version's gonna offer that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more videos. Find me on Instagram at CrossfieldMark. Also on Twitter at 4GolfOnline. Find me on Facebook, Mark Crossfield. Thanks for watching, post comments as always, and see you soon.